Hello there, my fellow War Machine enthusiasts, and welcome to another episode of Lore on the Vehicles of Battletech. For today, I wanted to bring into focus a selection of Battletech vehicles that may get overlooked in favor of dedicated tanks and gunships and whatnot. This topic is artillery and fire support vehicles. We're gonna talk about several of them today, ranging from the light to medium weights. There are obviously a lot more models outside of the ones we're gonna talk about today, but hopefully we're gonna get to those as well someday. Do stay until the end of the video and vote for future vehicles topics as well. I'm your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The first one we're gonna talk about today is the Zoria, and I hope I'm not mispronouncing it. This one is the lightest of the ones we're talking about today, weighing at 35 tons, a top speed of 64 kilometers an hour, and a rounded price of only 1.3 million. The Zoria light tank is an inexpensive combat vehicle, whose biggest asset is that it is very simple to use. This cheap vehicle uses an internal combustion engine and standard armor to save on the cost owing to it being one of the most prevalent vehicles in use by the clans of Kerensky. Moreover, the controls are basic, so the three-person crew can easily learn their role. It is protected by a scanned three and a half tons of armor, with most of that concentrated on the vehicle's front and turret. This tank can only manage about 64 kilometers an hour, which is another victim of cost-cutting measures used in the construction of the vehicle. An ECM suite does help defend the Zoria and the nearby allies from enemy electronics, but this often has the effect of making this tank into a magnet for enemy fire. Thus, the Zoria cannot take a lot of punishment, so it is designed to stay out of range of most enemy guns. Its turret carries both its weapons, an LBX Autocannon 5 and a shortbow LRM-10 launcher with an Artemis IV fire control system. Both the weapons have a long range and can be effective against VTOLs, making the Zoria quite capable against that kind of unit. A lot of autocannon ammunition allows the Zoria's crew to switch between cluster and slug munitions. The so-called ammo variant of the Zoria was introduced during the Succession Wars era. This one drops the Artemis IV for increased ammunition for the LBX autocannon. Additionally, the vehicle's armor was also increased, mainly in the front and turret areas. The ATM variant is based on the ammo variant, and it is a Jihad variant of the Zoria dropping the LRM launcher for a turret-mounted ATM-6 launcher with 20 rounds of ammo. ATM, in case you don't know, stands for Advanced Tactical Missile. This vehicle's internal combustion engine is also dropped for a fuel cell engine, increasing its top speed to 80 km an hour. The second thing we're gonna talk about today is the Ares. This one weighs a bit more at 40 tons, with a top speed of 86 km an hour, and a rounded price of 2.2 million. The officially named Ares Medium Tank is designed to stand off and take down its enemies at long range. It has a top speed of around 86 km an hour, which is quite fast for a fire support vehicle. Thus, it is often paired with APCs to support infantry. Four and a half tons of ferrofibrous armor protect the vehicle and its crew, although this somewhat meager protection encourages the crew to stay out of range of most return fire. The Ares also includes case, allowing the crew to survive an internal explosion. It is very popular with clans Coyote and Wolf, although it is present in some number in other clans as well. Primarily a standoff fighter, the Ares carries an ER large laser in the turret. Mounted on the front are a Type 10 shortbow LRM-10 and a Type 15 crossbow LRM-15 launcher, each of which includes an Artemis IV fire control system. In addition, the missiles can be fired indirectly with the help of a spotter, although somewhat unclan-like, indirect fire can help preserve the tank and its crew. On the other hand, the Clantech missiles have no problem arming quickly, making them just as powerful up close, unlike their inner sphere counterparts. 
This can make the Ares very deadly at short range as well. However, the limited ammo supply forces gunners to rely mainly on the laser, using the missiles only when they have to. The third vehicle for today is the Ballista. Weighing at 55 tons with a top speed of 54 kilometers an hour. Designed in the last decades of the 25th century, the so-called Ballista self-propelled artillery was made for the Terran Hegemony Armed Forces. Originally designed by Riverson Technologies of Nanking, the Ballista was considered the latest in artillery vehicles at the time. Vehicles made during the time were considerably heavier, slower, and carried less protection than the Ballista at the time. This one would be deployed in the closing years of the Age of War, its innovative design spurring the production of virtual clones for various inner sphere and major periphery powers. However, with the inception of the Star League, the SLDF forces would soon purge their clone copies in favor of the original. The Ballista would soon become the standard SLDF mobile field artillery piece for centuries to follow, only being replaced by vehicles such as the Sniper Artillery Vehicle or the Marksman by the 28th century. The vehicle would stay in service, with some minor updates, despite its ancient origin, throughout the Star League Civil War and well into the Succession Wars era with both the Inner Sphere and the Pentagon powers. Indeed, the Ballista was still in service with various powers during the Jihad as well. Designed as a pure artillery vehicle, it is appropriately armed with a Hegemony Arms D-1891 Sniper Artillery Cannon mounted in the turret. The vehicle carries three tons of ammo on board, however, with its trailer hitch it can transport a lot more. Its secondary weapons include three H-12 machine guns, mounting two forward and one in the rear. It is powered by a 165 rated internal combustion engine, and it is able to keep up at modest pace with the other mobile support elements. Protecting the ballista hull are 7.5 tons of quantum heavy plate, giving adequate protection against enemy fire should opposing forces manage to penetrate friendly lines and attack it. The fourth vehicle for today is the Glaive, weighing at 45 tons with a top speed of 86 km an hour and a rounded price of 1.5 million. The Glaive medium tank is produced by Cyclops Incorporated as an inexpensive alternative to mechs for loyal forces to Duke Robert Kelsva Steiner and the Isle of Sky. This guy personally convinced Cyclops CEO Morgan Durand to develop the design quickly following the death of Duchess Margaret Ayton, which they did in less than a year, enabling the design to see action in 3066. Although the LAAF pressured Kelsva Steiner to make the design available to all the units, he purchased all the production runs of at least four years for the Sky Rangers, citing the Regional Defense Edict. All the components used in the Glaive are produced locally, with the exception of the missile launcher, although it has been licensed from Coventry Metalworks, so that is expected to change. For a tank of its mass, the Glaive is not very speedy, and it is only capable of around 86 km an hour. It is protected by a rather scant 5.5 tons of armor. The biggest weapon of the Glaive is a Coventry Superfire LRM-15, which has enhanced accuracy because of its Artemis 4. This also gives the tank indirect fire capability, although the laser-guided system will not help it in this case. To supplement the missile launcher at range is an ER Lodge laser. To protect it at short range, as well as from conventional infantry, it mounts a pair of kicker machine guns. These are located in a turret mount along with the laser, so they can be brought to bear against any enemy that a crew can see. The fifth and final vehicle for today is the Padilla Artillery Tank. Weighing at 55 tons, with a top speed of 54 km an hour and a rounded price of 2.8 million. Not to be confused with the original Padilla tank, the Padilla Tube Artillery Tank was a Republic of the Sphere vehicle meant to fulfill a similar role. Designed and produced by Aldous Industries at the request of presenter Marshal Cameron St. Germain, 
The Padilla tube artillery tank serves as the main conventional artillery support platform used by the Republic Armed Forces. Carrying 7.5 tons of armor, the Padilla is well protected for a vehicle of its size. That is good, as the tank's rather low speed can make it an easy target for fast-moving units or airstrikes. It carries a sniper artillery piece as the main weapon. This is backed up by 2 tons of ammo, and allows the Padilla to put effective fire on targets at a great distance. For shorter range fire support, it is equipped with two LRM-5 launchers, backed up by another 2 tons of ammo. This 2-ton ammo bay allows the crew to also mix their ammunition kinds. Occasionally the Padilla crews have loaded Thunder LRMs to create a quick minefield. This allows them time to delay enemy forces while they themselves withdraw from close combat. Finally, a pair of small pulse lasers serve to deter enemy infantry. The Long Tom variant of the Padilla was developed in 3077 and it carries a single Long Tom cannon and two tons of ammo. To make room for this massive weapon, it drops one LRM launcher and one ton of ammo. This variant also has a Guardian ECM suite to protect itself. Another version is the Padilla anti-missile tank, introduced in 3134. This one replaces the standard Padilla weaponry with a Gauss rifle and a targeting computer. The only other weapons are an advanced point defense system carried in the turret. It also has 7.5 tons of vehicular stealth armor and a Guardian ECM suite. For today's poll and voting on future vehicles, you can pick between three hopefully entertaining choices. Option A is gunships, maybe with a focus on VTOLs. Option B is the unsung utility vehicles. And option C is hovercraft, probably of the light or medium weight. To vote, simply write down your choice in the comments below. Thank you very much for participating. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about these light and medium fire support vehicles and artillery tanks for today. Were you familiar with any of the models described today? Are any of them among your favorite vehicles? Do share any stories or thoughts you might have on them in the comments below if you want. Was the episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. And if you want to stay a bit more up to date, you can also click the bell notification icon. Thank you very much for watching to the end, and I wish you all a great and healthy day. This is GDN signing out.